good morning students today we will proceed with the control structures that is related to your unit 1 in the control structures we will study looping statements the jumping control statements and the manipulators the topics that we cover in our this lecture in the looping statements we will cover the usage of while loop do while loop and for loop it will depend upon you which loop that you are going to use in the while the syntax is while condition then the body of the while that is code to be executed then the do while in the do while we are having do then code to be executed then while condition generally the question is asked what is the difference between while and do while firstly if we check the while first we will check the condition then the code is executed it is called entry control loop fine entry control loop means when we enter into a program it will find out the condition if the condition is true then only you can enter into a program that means then only your pro code will be get executed do while called exit control loop in the exit control loop firstly there is do that means there is no condition checking at least your code will be executed once at least once then your condition will be get satisfied if the condition is true then only your loop will work your code will work otherwise in the second time if the condition is false your code will not be working then comes the for loop in the for loop we are having three parts like initialization condition increment or decrement it will depend upon you which type of logic that you are going to use first thing is in the for loop syntax if you are going to use your for loop then i am saying it is there is an initialization part in the initialization part we are having the privilege that we can initialize the value of any variable in initialization we can initialize more than two variables like if i am writing here int i equal to 0 j equal to 1 i can write like this right that means in the initialization it is not the condition that i can initialize only single value i can initialize more than one value in the initialization part then comes the condition you can't work on two condition condition should be one how many variables that you are going to initialize but they all the variables will work over a single condition so only a one condition will be there in each and every case fine then then after that there is increment or decrement is there again you can increment more than one value you can decrement value if you have initialized the variable i and j you can increment the variable i you can decrement the variable j that will again depend upon your logic it means that in the initialization you can have more than one value and in the decrement or increment you can have more than one value but the your condition will be that single only fine okay if we write for then semicolon then semicolon if i am not going to write any initialization here any condition here any increment or decrement here then it means your variable your loop will go infinite your loop will go infinite fine the other thing is if you are using your for loop and you are writing for then semicolon Uh, so you are writing i equal to zero, i less than equal to n, i plus plus, but you are terminating the loop because the condition is you can't terminate the for loop, but you are terminating the loop. That means your for loop will work only a single time because you are providing a termination symbol here. Fine. Right? Then we will implement 
some examples related to your while, do while, and for loop. Then we will proceed further. Okay, in the for loop, we are having the conditions like we are having three parts as initialization condition and increment decrement as is you can see over the whiteboard here the initialization part you can initialize more than one variable in the condition you can have only a single condition in the increment and decrement part you can have more than one variable fine uh, then the second thing is if you are writing your for loop and you are writing for then you are not mentioning any initialization variable. You just put on semicolon. Then you are not going to define any condition. You just put semicolon here. And you are not going to define any increment or decrement, any iteration there. Then your loop will go infinite. Fine. And the first condition that I have written is when you are writing your for loop and you have initialized some variable, you have given some condition, you are using some iteration, but you are terminating the loop because the condition in the for you can't terminate the for loop, but you are terminating the for loop by semicolon, then your program will execute only a single time. Okay. Okay, we will implement the while program first. Here over the ID, I'm going to write Here I am going to use the while loop, the usage of while loop to reverse a number. Firstly, when I am going to reverse any number, I require one number. So I am going to initialize one variable where I can give my value. Here I will stop, terminate the statement, then see out, enter the number. Then C in N. With this, I have entered the value of N. Now my while condition is while will work until your N is not equal to zero. Fine. Then the logic that will work. Okay. Here I'm going to find out the reverse. So to get the remainder and quotient, I need one modulus and division. Okay. I will use one variable as remainder. Here I am writing one variable as remainder. So I have to declare that variable as remainder. In the remainder, I am going to, as there is a name of the variable is the remainder itself so i'm going to find the remainder i'm going to use the modulus concept then i want to short my number to short my number i have to use division concept my number is with the variable n so i'm going to use n equal to n divide 10 or you can write by this way i'm writing this in comment by using shorthand operator both things are Right, fine. Okay, then comes the main logic. How it will calculate the reverse of a number. When you get oh, uh, get the reverse of the number, the program of palindrome will be get resolved by you. Okay. Here I will use one variable as reverse. So I have to declare that variable as well. Reverse equal to reverse into 10 plus remainder. 
this is the complete logic to find the remainder. How this will work? We will find out. Then see out. We have my value is calculated. My value is calculated here in the REV variable that is reverse variable. I'm going to write reverse equal to the name of the variable. Right? Then I will stop it. This is the complete program. Okay, let's see whether this program is working or not. Firstly, I will compile it. There is one error that is the name of remainder. Okay, there is some spelling mistake here. So it is giving one error. Then compile it. There is no any error. Let's check it whether it is working or not. I'm giving one, two, three number. I'm getting reverse a garbage value. Let's find out what's the reason behind the garbage value here. Why I'm getting this. Here I'm giving one number as one, two, three. One, two, three is not equal to zero. The condition is checked. Then I will find out remainder equal to one, two, three modulus 10. Here I'm getting the remainder. The remainder will be three here. Let's find out what's the. Okay. The garbage value is the reason is I'm using the same variable reverse equal to reverse on both sides. So I have to initialize that variable with some value. And here the logic is which value should I use to initialize. That's why it was giving a garbage value. Right. This is the way where you find out what's the error in my program. You have to go line by line. With this, you will get to rectify your errors easily. Okay. Here I'm using reverse equal to reverse into 10. Then which value should I use here? Let's take my reverse as initialized value as zero. Why I have used here? Let's check with the logic. I will use reverse equal to reverse as zero. Plus, this is the first time when your program is in the loop. Okay. This is the first time when your loop is working. 0 multiply 10 plus the value of remainder is 3. Then calculate it. 0 into 10 is 0. 0 plus 3 is answer is 3 here. Over answer should be 3, 2, 1. Okay. If you find out. I am getting my first digit as 3. Then I require 2. Then I require 1. Let's short this number. Here I am with the n value. Here the n value is 1, 2, 3. It will be get divided by 10. If I divide 1, 2, 3 with 10, I will get the quotient. The quotient will be 12. My number has been short. To short your number, to deduct your number, you have to use the division concept. Always remember this. Fine. Now you are with the n value. Your loop control. This is the first time where your while loop is working. Then the second time where your loop will work. I will make comment here so that you can easily understand. Now there is again condition checking. It says while n is not equal to zero. The value of n is twelve here because it has been reduced here. It has been short here and divided by 10. So 12 is not equal to 0. Again, the condition is true. 12 is not equal to 0. Then 12 modulo 10. Here again, we will find the remainder. The remainder will be 2 here. Then again, there is a calculation. Here it says reverse equal to reverse into 10. The value of previous reverse value is 3. So I will write here 3 multiply 10 plus the remainder value is 2. That's calculated. 3 plus into 10 is 30 plus 2 is 32. I'm able to get 32. Now again, let's short the value. The value of n is 12. 12 is divided by 10. The Quotient is 1. Then again, I will go back here. 1 is not equal to 0. Again, 
the third time my loop is working the condition is true then there is remainder calculation 1 divided by this was the example related to your while loop here if we consider this we are going to find the palindrome of a number what is palindrome concept is here i will give you one hint only palindrome number set if the number is 1 2 3 4 and you are going to find the reverse of the number if both are equal then this is a here i will take one number as a single number here either you are going to study the number from left to right or from right to left the number is same this is a palindrome number that you are going to find out here you are going to find out the reverse of the number then you will compare the number if you are getting the same number that means the number is palindrome if i take this example as 1 to 1 this is palindrome number either you study from left to right or from right to left this is palindrome if i take the number 1 to 3 that is not a palindrome number it means you are going to find the reverse of the number then you have to find the original number you have to compare both then you will find out whether this number is palindrome or not i will give you hint here how you will use here you will take one temporary variable as temp where you put the value of n that means whatsoever the value of n has been stored in your temp then the same logic will be used for palindrome and you will calculate the reverse instead of printing your reverse you don't need to print it you will find out your temp value is equal to your reverse value then you will use see out statement your number is palindrome else the condition is your number is not palindrome this is your program for palindrome similarly when you are going to calculate the armstrong number the only change will be here only the remaining concept will be the same fine you have to find out whether a number is armstrong number or not armstrong number is i will give you again hint 153 this is an armstrong number what is an armstrong number is if you take the cube of 1 cube of 1 is 1 then you will take the cube of 5 the cube of 5 is 125 then the cube of 3 the cube of 3 is 27 when you add all the cube of a single digit then you will get the number same number this is called armstrong number find right? that i have highlighted here this is called armstrong number you can take another example to check similarly you will store your number in some temporary variable yeah you will change the logic the logic will be changed here only then you will find out by the same way if the temporary value is equal to the variable that where your number will be get stored is equal then it is a armstrong number otherwise it is not an armstrong number now we will do another program related to your do while concept here i am going to use do while in the do while it says firstly you have to do then the scope of do will start then you will write your while condition right let's find out how this will work we are going to find a number whether it is a positive or negative that means you uh, your do will work until you enter your negative number fine 
here i will write the condition first when my number will become negative i will make a condition while will work until my n is greater than equal to 0 firstly if n is greater than 0 i require one number to be get entered here i will write one print statement see out enter n then see in the value of n here and find out whatsoever the value i have entered is greater than equal to 0 if it is greater than equal to 0 then i will write here c in n okay if you are entering any value which is not greater than 0 then you will get a message that oops you entered a negative number i hope the program is clear the program is your do will work until you will give a positive number when so ever you enter a negative number your loop will be get terminated how this will work let's save this program then run this there are two errors here one is okay then we will compile it then run my program here the value is 1 2 3 then my cursor is blinking on my console it means it is i require to enter one more value here i will enter here 4 5 6 then my cursor is still on the console that means my cursor uh, i have to enter some another value i enter here 76 then again my cursor is over the console because i am entering some positive values let's take some negative value i enter here minus 1 i am getting one error that is oops that is a display message not an error that is a display message oops you entered a negative number fine then i am not getting a option to enter my choice again to enter my value again okay this is the way you do while will work then i will come to your for loop in the in the for loop we will use our for loop to enter to find the factorial of a number by using some negative iteration how this will work firstly we require one number so i made one print statement see out enter n then see in the value of n then i will make one for loop as in i equal to instead of starting my loop with one i am going to start with n here how it will work and i is my condition will not be greater less than equal to my condition will be greater than equal to one then there is negative iteration then the same logic will work that is f equal to f into i that is working for positive iteration here i am using f variable but i am using f variable on both sides so i have to initialize that f variable with some value here the logic that will work the value of f should be initialized with one only okay here i am going to make one print statement factorial is f here let's save this and compile this there is no any error let's find out whether it is working or not yes the i have entered the number 5 the factorial is 120 how this negative iteration is working let's run this code here i will take example as 3 because it will take less iterations fine you can take any another example the first time when your for loop will work it will work as for i equal to n here the value of n i will use here as 3 3 is greater than equal to 1 yes my condition is true then there is a negative iteration that means 3 will be get decremented by 
the value of three will be two, but it is for the next time. For current time, I have to consider the value of i as three. Then there is a logic that is f equal to. I have initialized the value of f as one, one into i. The value of i is three. That is three. It is a with the negative iteration. You will get the exact way by which you calculate your factorial manually. Generally, you use if you have to calculate the factorial, then you use three to one. If you use the positive iteration, you have to go by the reverse order one to three. Here, you can go by the exact order three to one. Then you will go back here. Then the value of i has become two. Then you will again check the condition. Two is greater than equal to one. Yes, the condition is true. Then there is a negative iteration. The value of i will become one, but it is for the next time. Then the value of f equal to f into i. It will be the we will pick the latest value of f. The value of f is three. Three into two. The value of i that will become six. Then your program control will go back to the for loop. It will go until your condition will become false. Then the value of i again, i equal to one. Then the condition is i is greater than uh, one is greater than equal to one. Yes, yes, the condition is true. Then there is a negative iteration. The value of one will become zero. But it is for the next time for a current time. The value of i will be one only. Here we will take the latest value of f. The latest value of f is is six here. Six into the value of latest value of i is one. It will be calculated as six. Then your program control will go back. The value of i will become zero. Zero is greater than equal to one. No, your condition will become false. You will get Out of the loop, after the loop, you are going to print the value of f. The latest value of f that has been calculated is six. So the factorial of three will be get calculated as six. If we run the same for the value of three, as a factorial is six. Fine. By this way, you can use your for loop, do while loop, and your while loop. Now we will proceed further. Jumping control statements. Jumping control statements. I will make one simple program to understand the concept of what is jumping control statements. Here, there are three type of jumping control statements. One is break, then continue, then go to. Let's take some definition to understand what is break. Here the C plus in C plus plus break is used to break loop or switch statement. When we want to break any loop, when we want to terminate any loop, and we want to terminate any case that is related to your switch case statement, then we use the break. It breaks the current flow of the program at the given condition. In case of inner loop, it breaks only inner loop. It means if you are using more than one looping statement. We also ever we have used the break, then it will terminate only the it will terminate only the inner loop only. Okay, uh, this is your break statement. Then comes the continue. In the continue statement, it provides a convenient way to jump back at. To the top of a loop, either the normal, which can be used to bypass the remainder of the loop for an iteration. It means whatsoever you have written after the continue, your continue will go back to the to your loop and give control to your to whatsoever the loop you have defined. It will ignore the remaining code. Then go to in the go to statement, it provides an unconditional jump from the go to. To a label statement in the same function, the syntax is go to label. Let's find out with example what all mean. It will be clear with the example. I will. 
check the okay this is the layout of the program i will make one for loop as int i equal to zero i is less than five i plus plus then i will make one this is simple program to print your first five numbers starting from zero up to four zero one two three four Here I will use and else so that output will be clear to you. Let's find out firstly whether this program is working or not. There is no any error. Your output is zero one two three four. Fine. Now let's find out the usage of break, continue, and go to in the same program. Here I will use break here. Break will terminate my loop. Let's find out how it will terminate. The answer is zero. How I am getting an answer as zero because when I entered in the loop, the condition is i equal to zero. Zero is less than five. Condition is true. Then my control will go back, go to the for loop. Here I am going to print the value of i. The value of i is zero will be get printed. But after that, I am getting a statement that is break. Break means terminate the loop. I'm I'm up. Uh, I'm getting back to the. Uh, I'm getting out of the loop. Then if I use the continue, continue will dissolve the concept of break here. Let's find out. Here it says unreachable code. That is just a warning. I will run my program still. Because with the continue, I am getting the control back to my for loop. It is ignoring the break that whatsoever has been written after the continue will be get ignored. This was the definition in the continue that your program control will go back to the top of the loop. So until your condition will be get satisfied, your continue will work. Fine. In the same program, I will go. With the go to concept here, the syntax is go to. Then the label I will take the label as A B C. Here I will make one label as A B C, and write down I am out of my loop. Fine. Let's save it and compile it. Then run this. I'm getting no any output because I'm out of the loop. Let's find out how I am out of the loop. First, there is for loop. The condition is checked. Condition is true. But after that, I'm getting go to label. Go to label means where the A B C label has been defined. My program control will go there. Fine. I'm getting go to A B C. So it is ignoring all the steps what has been written in a program. My program control will directly go to the A B C here. The A B C I have written. I am out of my loop. Fine. This is the concept. How you will use your break when you want to terminate your loop? Then you can use break when you want to go back to top of the loop. Whether while ignoring some other part of the code, then you can use continue. But when you want to give direct control without executing whatsoever the code has been written, then you will use the go to that is called the direct jumping statements. Fine. Now moving to the next topic. This is the same example I have written here. Here I have used one. Loop starting from one up to iteration ten. I'm going to print the value hello here. With the same uh, way, you will get the result. Okay. Now comes the manipulators. Manipulators are the operators using C plus plus for formatting output. When you want your output in some precise manner, then you use manipulators. The data is manipulated by the programmer's choice of display. 
that means if you want to this is with the use of manipulator only your output form you can get formatted output whether you want to get your output in a center in a next line you want to make some stars of with along with your output you want to give any some precision values then you use the manipulators there are following type of manipulators and then i have used and then so many time that when you have to go with the next line you will use and then then set w set width set w w stands for width and some value will be there x is assigning some value then set fill set fill when you want to pair some uh, very uh, some you may say special character along with your output you will use set fill in the single quotes you will give that value either the value the character whatsoever you want to pair along with your output you can use set fill then is set precision with the set precision you will get how many values of floating point you want to get then you convert your code into hexadecimal octa and into decimal then there is a set base value let's find out with some okay let's take an example of handle uh, the manipulator has the same functionality as the n new line uh, you use generally backslash n when you want to give next line here you can use and l so you are going to use see out then you have written one program then you use and l your output will be like program in the one line and you will get computer in your next line fine set w set width is here the example is see out so you want to give 20 spaces in between computer program in c++ with Uh, in computer and program you want to give 20 spaces width of 20 spaces then you will write here set width the value and you can't give the value in single quotes or double quotes here you have to write this integer value only positive integer value then is set width then means whatsoever you value uh, whatsoever the value you want to give here you can give fine then is set fill here you want to fill the character like star then you will use 15 set fill star program whatsoever what will have be happened here that count the number of the alphabets in program there are seven letters in your program but here i am setting 15 your eight values which will be before the program which will will be get filled with star that means firstly you will get eight star then your output will be program star then program eight stars will be get printed and then program will be get written then set precision here i am taking some float value i am setting the value set precision 3 then going to execute the value of x then my result will be 12.345 because i have set here precision 3 i only want three decimal points here right then the program for hexadecimal octa and decimal when you are going to use the manipulators you have to add one extra header file for andl it is not mandatory okay but when you are going to use some other manipulator you have to use a header file that is iomanic.h that is the name of the header file then take some value as hexadecimal value or octa value or decimal value whatsoever the value you want to take you can okay so you have entered here see enter hexadecimal value here you will give the value like C in, then you will use the manipulator name as hex. Then you will enter your variable, whatsoever the variable you have initialized here. I have declared one variable as int n. So I am using C in hex n. Here I am getting. I want my whatsoever my number is will be get converted into octal and decimal as well. With the hexadecimal, I will get the same value. With the octal. i will get some another value 
that will be get converted into octal hexadecimal value will be get converted into octal value then your hexadecimal value will be get converted into your decimal value you must implement this program okay and find out by giving some different values in this program you can give your hexadecimal values as a b c d e your that is a the value of a as 10 value of b as 11 value of c as 12 you can give that values right but you take the small letters okay when you give a capital letter here it will convert into a small letter so take hexadecimal if you are going to take a b c d e f then uh, please take small letter then is set base value similarly if you have set base value as 8 you want to convert it into decimal you know when you convert any value into decimal you have to set the base as 10 if you here you will get the same values as set base 8 here if you want to set base as 16 you will get your hexadecimal value fine by this way you can convert your values of hexadecimal octal and decimal into any form okay let's take an example of switch case here in switch case we will add simple header files this is the basic layout of our program here i am saying a switch case is there fine a switch with some value should be there i am writing a choice a choice is a variable that i am defining in switch so i am going to initialize or declare that choice i am using as integer type so i have to declare my cases as integer type right here i have to give the choice so i will make one statement as enter a choice c in choice then in the case one i will simply write c out i am case one and then when you want to terminate your case you can use break or what the other thing yeah, that you can use instead of break is get ch that will hold the screen or exit these are the two things two functions that you can also use if you are using switch case then is case 2 i will make another c out statement as i am case 2 then terminate it by break then a default case a default case means if you are giving your choice instead of 1 and 2 you will get a message wrong input or wrong choice i will use wrong choice okay i will compile this there are errors missed place break is there because i haven't start the parenthesis of switch switch has its different control let's save it then compile it again there is no any error then run this code 
it says enter your twice i will write one here i am case one then i'm going back then again i will run the code enter your twice i am case two my program control will go there i will go uh, enter my choice as five five is not a case so i am getting wrong choice here now coming to how your switch case is working firstly you have made one statement like like you have to enter your choice the choice is for the cases okay when you have enter your choice i'm making this as a rough program so you may write here a statement like c out enter 1 for case 1 okay case 1 instead of case 1 1 for addition then i will close it c out enter 2 4 subtraction i will not extend it okay you may extend it later on and then i will make statement like enter it twice then see in twice when you will give your twice as one or two your program control will go there your twice will be entered here as one two whatsoever you are going to give then your program control will go to that respective case right here instead of writing c out i am case 1 i am going to add the values here the concept of addition will be get followed let initialize the value of variables as a and b and c okay in the case 1 you want addition so you will write c equal to a plus b c out sum is the sum is in the c but you have to give the value of a and b let's give the value here if you have enter your choice then i will write here c out enter a and b it will depend upon you where you want to give the variables where you want to enter the variables you can give then save it let's run it there is no any error then run the code it says enter 1 for add enter 2 for subtraction enter it twice i'm getting over a single line because i haven't used enter here you may use i will write enter my choice as 1 then it is saying enter the value of a and b i am giving the value 3 and 4 i am getting 7 fine let's clarify it more by writing next line either you can use slash n or end l it will be clear to you okay let's make some another case for subtraction also instead of case 2 i'm not going to give the values a some another variable value because a and b will be considered here the program control will go here if you choose this c out subtraction is c here i will compile the program there is no any error then run my code now it is clear to you enter 1 for add enter 2 for subtraction enter a choice i will enter my choice as 1 here enter the value of a and b here i will enter 5 and 6 sum is 11 this is my case 1 similarly if i want to go for case 2 i will press the choice 2 enter the value of a as 44 b as 11 My answer is thirty-three. Similarly, you can extend by giving different cases. Here are the cases when you are giving your choice as integer, but when you are giving your choice as character, okay, you are then you can't give your choice as like this. You have to give your choice in single quotes, 
okay in single quotes means your choice will be as a character the character will be considered in single quotes whatsoever you are going to use here either a b c or what the other special character you have to use it in a single quotes okay yes compile it this is again working this is all about your program of switch case 